Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. How stupid can you be? I'll tell you, pretty darned if your name is Gary Wybinger. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. Here's Gary. So, why things don't shrink equally with distance? And why the bottoms will shrink drastically quicker than the tops. This, these nails are the observer. Close, further and further from the building, from the bottom too. He's equal to the first floor. He's in between the first floor and the top of the second floor. So he's in the middle between the two floors. I assume Gary's going to try to show us why things disappear from the bottom up, and it's going to be because of angles. So let's make sure we understand Gary's model here. This is a building, and usually the floors are about 10 feet. So this bottom floor is about 10 feet, the next floor about 10 feet. The total height of the building is about 60 feet. And it looks like the observer is going to be about mm, 10 feet away. So let's put Cletus right there. Now, Gary, let me point something out. We don't normally expect buildings to disappear from the bottom up when we're only standing 10 feet away from them. And if we are standing 10 feet away from a building and it disappears bottom up, my suggestion is run, preferably not in the same direction you last saw the building. Get out of there, Cletus. You notice he's got this wide angle here. When he's close up. Well, that also gives him a wide angle down here to the ground. Now as it moves further away, this wide area becomes much narrower. And because you can see this angle is drops down, right? So these two, the one going to the bottom and the one to the top, they're compressing with distance and they compress drastically from here and that's because you're standing ridiculously close to it and then even more here these are the lines that bring things to your center of your vision as you move away a smaller space the further you get now we're going to show you how the angles from the top change differently the ones at the bottom keep getting smaller and smaller as they go away at the vertex the vertex Vertex, vertex. Gary's vertex identification skills are flawless. Well done, Gary. Okay, now we still have our observer in the same place from the same starting position. To the top here, he's got a narrow angle compared to what the bottom had a big wide angle to these two. It starts off narrow. Now you have an angle to the surface here too. To the side of the building. It's very narrow. That's because Cletus is only standing 10 feet away from the damn thing, Gary. Right here. But that is called foreshortening. Because the closer the angle to a surface, the more foreshortened the information will be in that area. Now, as the observer stays at the same elevation, moves further away, you notice the vertex at this angle increases a little bit. It actually gets wider. Why? Because this angle now gets wider. Here was the first one. Here's the second one. It's much wider. So you increased the distance and this became 
spider here. Dumber than a second coat of paint. So with increased distance, you changed your angle of view and made it wider. Hmm. They call that reverse foreshortening. Now you get to the third one. You're further away yet. It's even wider than here. This one is wider than this one. This one is wider than this one at the vertex. This one is narrow, or this one is narrow right here. This one is wider. And the last one is even wider. So as you move away, the bottom actually, or the top stories actually increase in size. They don't decrease because you've reversed the foreshortening effect. So your vertex down here at the bottoms, at the distance, became wider. Whereas the ones on the bottom kept getting narrower. So the ones at the bottom are diminishing faster than the ones at the top, which are actually getting bigger. Now you do have the angle change, which this angle is not as steep as this angle, which is not as steep as this angle. So that's bringing everything down and yet you still see more of the surface area here with distance because this is increased. This is why bottoms of mountains, bottoms of buildings, bottoms of ships all become smaller, quicker than the tops. That's why they will become unresolvable quicker. There's no getting around any of this. This can probably also be applied to things like uh, Polaris, right? Your angles are going <laughs> to behave similar. So anyhow, do with whatever you want with this. Nobody thought it was possible, but it is. It's reverse. Um, it's a reverse foreshortening effect. That's what I'm going to call it. The reverse foreshortening effect. I like that. Simple, straightforward, and about as useful as a cow patty at a cocktail party. Gary, you started out with Cletus way over here, 10 feet away from the building. And obviously, he's about 40 feet away from the top of the fifth story of the building. So, I'm not even going to talk about that projection. Let's back Cletus up to a point that's about midway between your outer two markers. And clearly... The angular size of the upper two stories is increasing more quickly than the angular size of the bottom two stories is decreasing. We won't even argue that. Of course, that's what's going to happen. But you seem to suggest at some point that the upper two stories are going to become actually larger in angular size than the lower two stories are. And that is, frankly, impossible. Cletus is always going to be closer to the bottom two floors of the building than he is to the upper two floors of the building. Let's back Cletus up just 500 feet. Now we'll bring Cletus in over here on the left side and have him take a look at the building. I know you can't read those angular sizes, so let me blow up that part of the drawing. And you see this. Now from just 500 feet away, the difference between the upper angular size and the lower two-story angular size is only 0 0.02 degrees. That is about the diffraction limit for a person with 20-20 vision. Cletus is not going to be able to tell the difference in the size of the upper two floors and the size of the lower two floors. But let's go out to 5,000 feet, roughly a mile. Look at the upper part of the drawing. We're just going to look at that area in the white circle down there on the right hand end. Cletus is way over here on the left. Now look at the angular sizes. 
There's the upper two stories angular size and the lower two stories angular size. The difference in those angular sizes is less than two one hundred thousandths of a degree. But again, the angular size of the lower two stories is still a little bit larger than the angular size of the upper two stories. Let's go out to three miles. This is the point where the bottom of the building might actually begin to disappear. And it's not going to disappear because of angular size. It's going to disappear because of the curvature of the earth. Again, we'll look at just that right hand end in the white circle and Cletus again is over here on the left. Now look at the angular sizes. That's the upper two floors. That's the lower two floors. And the difference in angular size is six ten millionths of one degree. But again, and this is always going to be true, the size of the lower two floors is slightly larger than the angular size of the upper two floors. Gary, it's not angular size that causes things to disappear from the bottom up. It's the curvature of the earth. I believe severe derp has been destroyed. I think the globe model is still intact. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget those little buttons down there. Shout out to all the members and patrons and PayPals. I appreciate what you guys do and I'll see you on the next one.